exactly what meat we have on the menu. We've had him tested, haven't we? Yes, we have. He's 100% pure rock and roll. Please welcome Meat Loaf! <laughs> Yeah. Dry ice and everything. Meat life is in the house. We've never had dry ice in the one show before. No. Oh, oh I, feel, I feel honored and special. We've now. rarely had dry eyes, let alone dry ice. <laughs> How is your knee? My, uh, uh, my, you it okay? still hurts. Yes. Yeah, just to be honest with you, it still hurts a little bit, but it, that, that won't stop me from anything. So Except you've had an operation, haven't you? Mm. Yeah. You want to see the scar? Uh, okay, later, okay. perhaps. Oh, okay. No, no, no. no rock and roll here. Okay, so, no, they. Uh, they had to, uh, I, I was getting a little nervous there for a while because we'd already gone on sale with the tickets and uh, it wasn't getting any better. And we, we were getting really nervous. We were going to have to cancel. And then uh, I started going to acupuncture and we had nerve tests and we were doing everything we could do. And, and I was working out like two hours a day and riding the bike for 30 minutes and the elliptical machine for 30 and, you know, up to 100 pounds on leg presses and and uh, but it's got nerve damage, but uh, but it's fine. I can walk. It just has nerve damage because okay. I had to straighten my bones. Has it affected your golf? <laughs> Nothing could affect my golf. <laughs> <laughs> you do like that to hug it. onto your playing partners. Take a look at this. <laughs> yeah. That's me and me getting very showbiz right. now, a few a years ago. A, there's a bit of a bromance going on there between my, you two. My golf game is so bad that nothing could affect it. I actually gave up after that day. Yeah, I, I've yeah. never played since. Really? Really? No. No, it's true. <laughs> no, you were no, pretty I'm good. Joking. I'm joking. I love it. No, what did you have, like, at the time? 14 handicap or something? something? Like, we don't like to talk about that. Uh, right. It's the get... start. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what he's doing? He's hustling the next tournament. I yeah. mean, the next game. Yeah. Yeah. We don't game. talk about that. We really talk about it. Okay, it's the start. Film. Thank you so much, everybody involved with that. Regulars on Paul's Thought and Radio 2, many of them. So, uh, Meatloaf, you've been surrounded by a lot of sermons, a lot of spirituality, a lot of religion. Even though uh, you're not religious yourself, you do say you're a fan of religion. How does that work? Huh? Well, <laughs> do you know what? Well, uh, I was sitting there thinking, that was the, the yeah, Chris, Chris, know. Chris, that was the strangest question ever. Well, that's what I thought in the meeting. They said, just ask it anyway. I said, okay, okay, I'll go ahead. Well, you should, have, you should have stayed in the meeting longer. So, anyway, uh, a fan of religion. Um, well, they said you did. Well, I am religious. I believe in Jesus. Oh, I believe. Well, they said you did. You, you yes. are. No, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus. Okay. My grandfather was a minister. He was a minister for the Church of Christ. He wasn't a hellfire and brimstone preacher, which, uh, which I could have easily been, and uh, I could have, I could have been a television evangelist, and and the three of us could have been together. We could have made a fortune. Oh. Your soul thing. Like uh, I, I say, I say, I want you. <laughs> I want you now. I want you to send us a pound. I want you to send us two pounds. Brother Chris, Sister Alex, we will pray oh, for you. You need a new garden hose. You send us a pound. We'll pray for you. You will have that garden hose. Full of holy water. <laughs> so you do, so you do and, uh, believe in Jesus then? Uh, I do, in but on Leap of Faith, when I was shooting the movie Leap of Faith with Steve Martin, he was losing his voice. Mm. So I would do the reversals on the crowd. I would be the preacher. So when they sent the dailies back to Paramount, uh, the heads of Paramount said, who did you get locally for the preacher? And they go, we didn't get anybody. That's meatloaf. And they went, you're kidding. So I was hoping they'd put me in my own little, you know, uh, Hellfire and Brimstone movie, but they didn't. Well, you sort of have a bit of that going on on stage, don't you? Let, let's go back to 1977 and have a look at this. <laughs> oh, the spirit. <laughs> Oh, kind of God, I was started. young. <laughs> but now you're back in the UK for your last tour. Yeah. Last at back. Well, I've had, you know, this knee. I did a, I did a movie. Uh, uh, what was the name of the movie, Francis? Help me out. In uh, September and October. Stage fright. Stage fright. And there was a lot of stunts. A lot of, I stabbed a lot of people and killed people, which is normal for me in a movie. And uh, the stuntman 
wasn't doing so well, so I decided that I would take over and be thrown over tables and hit with frying pans and things like that, and really tore this knee up. Mm-hmm. And two weeks before they did it, I, I couldn't walk from the kitchen to the to the uh, to the bedroom, which is a drag for me. Let me tell you, not being able to get to the kitchen, and. Uh, <laughs> So um, I have to have this one done. Plus, I've had 18 concussions. And for the last three or four years, they've been flaring up. And uh, after 18 concussions, uh, I knew something had to come around sometime. And I, I, my equilibrium is, is off. And, I, and like the last few years, I kind of get on stage and I will like wobble a bit and stumble. And, and, they, and you see them right after. He was drunk up there. And, uh, and no, no, ma'am, I wasn't. Uh, they just assume because they've heard so many rock, you know, people about uh, rock stars being drunk on stage that I was, but that's not the case. But this could be a throwback from the original tours because we were talking before the show and you said that the original concerts lasted four and a half hours. Maybe that's had some lasting, lasting problems with you. But no, we didn't have enough songs for that, Chris. You said you told me it was four and a half hours. <laughs> no, I hours. said this new show, the show that we were putting up now, mm. On our first run through. Oh right! It's four and a half. It was hours. four and a half hours. <laughs> okay, but this this show that you're doing now, you split. We've cut it, it down to two. two yes. Almost well, thank two you and, and, and you split it into two sort of sections. Yes. So what are the two sections? The two, the, the, the first section is is uh, some stuff that everybody knows, and then the second act is "Bad Out of Hell" in sequence. "Bad Out of Hell" took the words "Heaven Come Away" all revved up, two out of three "Paradise" and "Crying Out Loud." And when I agreed to it, I thought, yeah, great. And then after I agreed to it, I went, what have I done? And then when we get in rehearsal, it's actually, it actually is a lot of fun What's to do it you? that way. I've seen you in concert, sorry, the Alba Hall, it was absolutely brilliant. And eight lucky cities, eight lucky venues, you're going to get to see you again in a couple of weeks' time. But, the, but the, I, I mean, I, I can't tell you how much fun it is to do Baton Rouge. The only one I'm... Uh, the only one I was struggling with was Hemmick and Wait, which was very strange. So I'm in, I've been... I've been uh, uh, emailing with Jim, going, OK, Jim, uh, help me out here, dude. And uh, Jim goes back, it's very legato meat. I went, I know that, Jim. <laughs> and so uh, Jim Steinman, who's the composer. Right. And this is the keyboard on your computer. This is not the keyboard. Yeah, this play. is the keyboard yeah. on the computer. <laughs> I, I, I type all of 18 words a minute. Right. And we need to quickly mention as well, you'd also re-release in the original 1977 Battles of Hell. Yes, they decided they'd 3D. pay me for a re-release. So I said, OK. 3D. Because cool. I, I really haven't been paid. But shh. OK. <laughs> what better reason? Look at that. What an iconic cover those. Right, time now for an Easter feast, and this is the one and only time I'm going to say this. Nice buns, Jay. Well, thank you very much, Chris. You're a damn handsome man. Tonight, the one show becomes the bun show as I try a little round baked taste of heaven. A good day's filming, we suspect. Yeah, that congratulations to James. All right, uh, Jay's brought some buns in, but, Jay, first of all, a question. Yes, when Chris. does a bun become a cake, please, officially? A bun is a yeast-raised loaf, mm -hmm. like a bread, yes. whereas a cake is raised by other means, using baking powder, for example. All right, so they come, I one was can't they come I the was other. raised by yeast, by he the was way. Raised by yeast. <laughs> <laughs> now, you have an issue. You have an issue with yeast, don't you? Tell us about your issue. Well, no, I, I, to also, to help my name, I've gone gluten-free, which helps reduce inflammation. No potatoes, no... We, no, the only thing I'm having problems with is sugar. Yeah, okay. But, you know, come on. We do have meat's bun here. Which right. Is right. Well, you Blue get stuck into bun. that. There thing. you go, mate. You, you have that. There we are. Now, as, um... I know, it's, it's special, <laughs> isn't it? Do you want to put it down again? Speci no, I'm going to hold it. Oh, you hold on. Yes. To it. Okay. Now, a special hot cross bun tradition happened this afternoon, didn't This it? very afternoon, a tradition dating back to 1842 at what is now the Widow's Sun Pub in East London. The story is a cottage, a widow is waiting for her son to come back from the Navy. He doesn't return. She's, uh, he's asked her to bake a, 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 a hot cross bun, so she puts one in a net at the top of the kitchen. That cottage burnt down, replaced by a pub, and we went to see the tradition recreated today. We've got a little bit of film of it um, at the pub. There's the hot cross buns hanging from the ceiling. The tradition is that the youngest sailor in the room, it's full of sailors, puts the bun into the net on the top. And look, there she goes. And the hot cross bun has gone in. It's like commentating on sport, this. It's going in. And there it goes. And then they sit there. Well, they do more than sit there, don't they? Oh, the buns sit there. The buns sit The there. sailors are still there, actually. The sailors are still there, probably drinking at this moment. They're yeah. watching, they'll be watching the show and tell you, hello, the sailors, say hello to the sailors. They look like they're having a great time. Oh, hello, sailors. <laughs> hello, sailors. <laughs> no. Oh, no, no, sailors. Steady. <laughs> OK, now, there's, it's supposed to ward off some fate, isn't it, keeping those buns... Yeah, there are, there are a number of traditions. English folklore suggests that they're, they're good for friendship. Split a hot cross bun between a friend and you will stay friends. Mm -hmm. uh, another one, the buns are said to protect against shipwrecks. Yes. 
Um, I've been carrying a bun for years and I haven't yeah. been shipwrecked at all, so it I works. Yes. There is another one oh, no. which says that if you have a bun hanging in the kitchen, it protects against fire, which is, I'm sure, absolutely great. Unfortunately, the pub we just looked at did burn down in the 1980s. Is that true? Yes, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, so smoke detectors so, there. Yeah, smoke bun detectors. shapes. They had to start detection. the whole tradition again. Yeah. Right. Isn't there a really nasty song about hot cross buns? There possibly is, but yeah. you're not going to repeat it. No, I'm wrong. No. <laughs> but you've brought in an array of buns. We have a great today, bun so. tradition. Come on, buns! Come on, let's get buns. Buns. You have so that one. at the top we have the bath bun, which you may recognise with the, with the crusted sugar. There are some people in Bath who think that this is an imposter created by Dr Oliver, and that the real bath bun is the one at the bottom, created by a Protestant French Protestant uh, incomer whose name was she was called Sally Lunn, and yes. it's more like a big brioche. Can I give bun. some of these out to the gang? You, you can you can do what you like with them. Are the meatloaf like fans like, also bun like fans? A toasted tea <laughs> Go on then. There you go. Go on. Right. Go on, tea, one is over there. Ah. Oh, oh, Joking, oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Now, what, what, what are these? All right, here, then, we also here. have oh, the Chelsea bun uh, in various areas of Chelsea. They're talking among themselves, it's like oh. I'm not even here. The Chelsea yeah, bun is a very glazed, coiled bun, and there used to be competitions in areas of Chelsea to see who can make the best. Here. If you ate that one, if you say you've got a, you're a bit partial to sugar, one of those, oh. and frankly, yeah. you know, you'd you be in a car. Oh, no, I've been looking at those since you set them down. Um, they're, they're talking to you, aren't they? Eat, yes. Eat me. Well, now, wait a second. There's, they are. Uh, OK. Uh, it, it, a hot cross bun doesn't have a cross on it, isn't that the idea? Um, well, they do. If you see, there's a cross. Well, I see that, but yeah. this one doesn't. No, have these aren't hot cross buns. Oh, there are other okay, kinds okay. of buns. Uh, yeah, that's like a cinnamon bun. We segued bun. now. That's like a cinnamon from the hot cross bun uh, to other buns. Hey, I'm slow. Well, yes, we sort of did. We sort of segued. We need to segue a bit more, to be honest. Oh, that's what there's also the fat rascal. Segue more. Thanks, segue Jay. more. Thank you, Jay. Now, wildlife, uh, and it's Easter, so there's obviously some really cute animals that we could talk about. Yeah, but as Meatloaf is here, we've chucked out the chicks and we've been the bunnies. Instead, here come some cute, fluffy Easter bats. bats. Films go, that was brilliant, wasn't it? They're so cute. All right, um, so who's chucked early? Who's gone Easter early? Matilda, 13 months from Red Car. She's gone early. Go on, Meatloaf. My turn. OK, I got baby, baby Joe from Redditch, <laughs> from Steve Morgan. And this is John James enjoying an early egg from Kaylee Small. Oh. We had loads of those, sorry we can't show them all. Now, what would the coal snap set to last at least a few weeks longer? How about a new indoor hobby? And yes. uh, we've got a suggestion Come on, you right here. Okay. Come on, Marie Meatloaf. Now, earlier on, we met Lee, who is about to take part in the Stacking World Championships in Orlando. Are you all right there? Oh, yeah, I'm good. Great. Good, 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 good. So, OK, so... How did you get into this, Lee? I got into it when my primary school brought in a lot of sets for the whole class to stack with, and I was the one that was the most interested. OK. OK. How, um, how many hours do you rehearse a day, then? Uh, around an hour a day. An hour a day? Does it drive your parents mad, the sound of these cups stacking? <laughs> They've got used to it. Now, what are the rules for the competition that you're going to fly over to Florida to do? There's just basic rules that, once you stack them up, from here, for example, you must go back to the beginning and stack it down that way. All right. Yeah. And uh, Meatloaf is going to have a go. Did what you know about this? What does he have to do? What's Meat going to have to do? Is this a basic stack, yeah? Yeah, yeah? yeah. What you're going to do is the 33, but three times in under 30 seconds. So what you first do is put both hands on the timer, and when the timer goes green, you let go and you start stacking. And it doesn't matter what's, what side you start on, but as yep. long as you stack. So just show us just quickly. You do the three. There you are. Yes. Three. three. Yes. Yes. Three. Then you must go back to the beginning. Okay. okay. Take it down. Take it down. Take it down. Take it down. Okay. Take it Take down. It down. Three times, yeah? And then that was the first one, so you do it again. Don't worry. Okay. We get the idea. I don't think we're going to get that far, but we're going to have a go. Yeah. All right. So, so Mr. Milo, if you do this, if okay, you do this okay. well within 20 seconds, okay. you get a kiss from Haley and Nora. Rock and roll yeah, cheer. Yeah, yeah. If you fail, you get a kiss from Arif the Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> You want to okay. go for this one? Okay, fast. you ready? Three, two, one, okay. go! Okay, what's that over there, guys? <laughs> what behind you? Okay. Oh, no! Arif, you're on. <laughs> All right. Do you want the girls? Pray silence for the master, yeah? Do your stuff. Off you go, my friend. Go on, Lee. Okay. Look at that, lady. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to